What up, guys? It's your boy, Matt, from RamseyVoice.com, and I am so excited to give you a complete vocal warm-up today, one that you can use every day, whether you're getting ready to go on stage, or whether you're just going into the recording studio, or whether you're just trying to improve your singing voice. And the cool thing about vocal warm-ups is that vocal warm-ups are the number one thing that you can do every day to improve your singing voice. And you would not believe how many professional singers actually don't do them. Now, I do want to say there's a big catch to that, which is all of the best vocalists and all of the most professional singers out there actually do do warm-ups every single day. But there are a lot, looking at you in the rock genre, that don't actually do enough warm-ups for their voice. And that's a big problem. A vocal warm-up is going to help you in so many ways. Not only is it going to help you sing better, but it's also going to help you avoid vocal injury, which nobody wants that. So you're gonna get three huge things out of today's lesson. Number one, you're gonna learn three main things that you're going to get out of doing a vocal warm-up. You're also going to get five fantastic best practices for any time that you're going to warm up. You want to make sure that you're following these five things exactly. And then finally, I'm going to give you 10 amazing vocal warmups that you can use and practice right along with in this lesson to improve your singing voice. Before we jump in, you know what you got to do. You got to smash that like button, comment with the next kind of video that you want to see me do, and also make sure that you subscribe and turn on notifications for this channel. Or if you want to improve your singing voice today, check out my complete singing course, Master Your Voice. Just click the link to get on the wait list for it. Okay, let's jump in. Now, I mentioned earlier that a vocal warm up is the number one thing that you can do to improve your singing voice today. Well, why? Why is a vocal warm up actually important? Well, I think that it's really important that you remember that the vocal cords, the actual pieces of membrane and tissue and blood and muscle inside of your larynx here that are creating all of your singing, they're just flesh and blood too. And so going into a large vocal performance, or even if you're just recording for fun without actually warming up beforehand, is a bit like running without stretching beforehand. The vocal cords themselves are actually going to be vibrating hundreds, if not over a thousand times per second. Just to give you an example, in order to hit the A440, the that note right there, my vocal cords need to be opening and closing 440 times per second in order to make that note. So we're talking about hundreds, if not thousands of collisions in your vocal cords per second. And so if you don't warm up beforehand, that's gonna hurt after a while. Now, there are three main reasons that you wanna make sure that you're warming up before a big performance or whether you're just warming up your voice for your voice lesson for the day. The number one thing is that it's going to increase the blood flow into your vocal cords. So just like any other muscle, the more that I work it, the more blood is going to actually flow into that muscle area, which is going to help everything continue moving. A vocal warmup is also going to thin out the mucus secretions that hang out on the vocal cords and can make so much of that uh, kind of raspy, kind of hoarse sound. You always want that nice open ah uh, sound and you don't want to get that clouded up with any of the mucus and the third huge reason that you want to sing with a vocal warm-up is that it's going to help you improve your mixed voice if you haven't heard the term mixed voice before it basically means that you're blending the bottom part the chest voice with the top part of your voice the head voice to create one even sound so uh, Ma, 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 ma. That's on an F sharp in the middle of my voice, and that's no longer in my chest voice. It's not exactly all the way in my head voice either. Instead, it's a mix. It's a blend between the two. And the problem with singers who don't warm up is it is very, very difficult to find that mixed voice unless you've warmed up beforehand. In other words, very often, it's easy to ma, 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 and have a big old break in your voice if you haven't warmed up. But after having warmed up, you'll Ah, it'll be so much easier for you. Now, before we jump into the vocal warmups, I actually want to give you five recommendations, five best practices that you can use every time that you're going to do a vocal warmup. The number one thing that you want to start off with is warm up for 30 to 60 minutes per day. If you're going to be doing a big performance later on, you can limit it to just 30 minutes or even maybe 20 or 25 minutes, just enough to get everything moving in your voice, everything working again. However, if you're warming up just to improve your singing voice in order to do a voice lesson for the day or something like that, you can warm up 
up to an hour. And I would recommend doing about 30 minutes of vocal warmups, exercises, and then the second half hour, you can work on a song. The next best practice for doing your vocal warmups is I want you to really focus on the vocal exercise that you're doing. Oftentimes when you're doing singing lessons, it's really easy to just kind of like space out and like you're just like, like you're not even thinking about it anymore. You're just like your mind somewhere else. However, I cannot emphasize how important it is that you keep a really close eye on the exercise that you're doing. Oftentimes that's because you may actually do something really, really great <laughs> with your voice. But if you're not paying attention to it, it's gonna be really difficult to kind of like reiterate that. I have that problem with students all the time. They'll just be like, they may be flipping their gee, 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 And then all of a sudden on the next one, they're gee, 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 gee. They sing it in a beautiful mixed voice. And I'm like, did you feel that? Did you feel that? And they're like, uh, did I feel what? It's like, it, 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 it totally passed them by. So go ahead and focus on each one of the exercises, specifically in how they sound and how they feel. The third best practice for doing your vocal warmups is you wanna make sure that you have water handy. In fact, I'll take a little sip myself right now. The reason that you want to have water handy is because just like any other muscle, the vocal cords can get a little bit dehydrated, and especially since you're breathing in and out so much, things can be a little bit dry in there. Now, it will take about 30 minutes for the water that you drink to actually pass through your stomach and actually make its way all the way into the vocal cords and some of the other tissue in your body. So I always recommend doing a hot shower in the morning along with some of the vocal exercises and the vocal warmups that I do here because the steam that comes out of the shower will actually impact the vocal cords a lot faster than just drinking water. I'm not saying to replace it at all, but I'm saying that if you wake up and your voice feels really dry and really hoarse, take a hot shower, get some of the steam in there, but plenty of water. You should be drinking a couple of liters of water per day, depending on your weight and your gender. In general, women I believe can drink about two and a half liters of water a day, and men are around like 3.5. And both of those are fantastic place to get started, but just make sure that you have water handy because we're moving things around in here. And when those things move around, sometimes it's very easy to get like a little bit of mucus that comes up and you want to be able to wash that off very quickly. The next best practice before you warm up is you want to make sure that you have a good night's rest. I cannot emphasize how important this is because there are so many more important things to your body and to your survival than learning to sing. So if you're really, really tired, or for instance, if you're really, really hungry, your mind is gonna start shutting off those parts of your brain that are trying to learn how to do this very complex activity. Instead, they'll just focus on, oh man, I'm so tired, man, I'm so hungry. Instead, just eliminate those right away. Get a good night's sleep, have good nutrition, and then you'll be ready to learn. You also want to make sure that when you're doing your vocal warm-ups that you have a healthy voice. I know this seems really obvious, but if you have a cold or the flu or something like that, you just can't expect to get the same quality out of your voice as when you're healthy. So make sure that you have a healthy voice. And if your voice is feeling under the weather, if you're not feeling well and you do have an important performance coming up, make sure to book a lesson with a teacher that really knows what they're doing. There are definitely ways that as a voice teacher, I can help my students get that function back into their voices and get their voice like feeling maybe not as good as new, but pretty close to where it was. But again, you have to use some really, really specific vocal techniques there. And it really depends on that individual singer. Now that we've gone through the best practices before you warm up, let's actually jump into my 10 favorite vocal warmups. You ready to get started? Let's do it. The first vocal warm up that I want to show you how to do is we have to start off by just warming up the chest voice. One of my favorite exercises for doing this is what I call the five tone count exercise. And basically, we're going to just sing a five tone scale. So, uh, but we're actually going to count those words on each one of the pitches. So it'll be kind of like a one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. And guys, we can start right there on the C3. So it'd be like a one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. Ladies, we can do the same thing right here on that G3. One, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. 
One, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. This is a really, really great exercise just to get everything kind of working in your voice. And notice that I wasn't too breathy or too light. Instead, I just kind of spoke the words. And that's getting the complete closure in my vocal cords that I need in order to get them warmed up. Now that you've warmed up the bottom part of your voice a little bit, let's actually warm up the entire vocal range. Now for this one, we're gonna use one of my absolute favorite exercises, the octave and a half lip trill. The lip trill is so, so fantastic at helping you warm up your entire voice because it's very difficult to kind of flip on the lip trill. The lip trill, in case you're not familiar, is this And in case you can't tell, it's very difficult to and have that big old break there. And since learning how to sing in a mix is one of the biggest reasons to do a vocal warm up, it only stands to reason that we should start off here with the lip trill. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do an octave and a half scale on a lip trill. In case you haven't done a lip trill before, just take your two fingers, place them in the middle of your cheeks and flop your lips together. I'm not pushing them too far. I'm not pulling them back. Instead, I'm just resting them. And behind those lips, I'm thinking the vowel uh, like, uh. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do that on our trusty octave and a half scale. And in case you haven't seen some of my other videos, the octave and a half scale is really simple. It just goes one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Just like that. So you could also think of it in terms of triplets, like triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it, done. Whatever it is that makes the most sense to you, just follow that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do that on the lip trill. Now keep in mind, I can't do it because I'm playing the piano at the same time, but in my voice it would look kind of like a Now, I'm gonna go ahead and play and do the lip trill at the same time, like this. Guys, join me here on the B on two. Fantastic job. Ladies, let's do the same thing starting here on G3. On none of them did I really get stuck into the bottom part of my voice. Like I didn't get stuck in my chest voice like and just try to push it. Instead, this is all about relaxing. Just super easy, just letting it flow, and that is one of the best vocal warm-ups for you. In the next exercise, we're gonna take that same octave and a half scale, but rather than flopping our lips together in order to start singing on each one of those notes. Instead, we're going to do it on a squeaky mm, mm, mm feeling. So just say that with me, kind of like a mm, mm, mm. And notice that it's kind of squeaky, like I'm opening a door, like And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go on that same octave and a half scale and keep it really squeaky. The reason that we're doing it kind of squeaky is because that squeaky or that kind of bratty or witchy or kind of nasal squeaky sound is bringing the vocal cords together. And remember, that's one of the whole reasons that we're doing a warm up in the first place is to continue to get those vocal cords working together from bottom to top. Great, so let's start the guys off down here. So it's gonna be like a Let's do that here. Notice I'm not and just pushing up to it instead of Great job. Ladies, let's do the same thing here. And don't worry if it feels or sounds kind of nasal to you. It's an mmm and my mouth is closed. Of course it's gonna be nasal. But the whole point here, again, remember, is to just keep those vocal cords working from bottom to top. So if I feel a mmm, like I'm disconnecting to falsetto, that's not good. What we want is that really 
kind of squeaky feeling, even if it doesn't sound perfect just yet. Great job, guys. So I have to be honest, so far we've just done exercises with our mouths somewhat closed. We call that a semi-occlusive exercise or a semi-occluded vocal tract posture, like the or the I'm closing something in my mouth and that's actually helping my vocal cords stay together a little bit more. It's a really cool uh, concept called reactance, which we can talk about another time. For today, let's just jump into our next vocal warm up. but this time we're actually going to open our mouths slightly, but keep on that same octave and a half scale. Now, if you know my channel, you've probably seen this one before. We're gonna do an octave and a half gee, 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 like you're saying the word geese, but on each of the notes. So it'd be kind of like a Guys, join me here on B2. Ladies, let's do that same thing here. Excellent. Notice I'm not pushing. I'm not into those top notes or anything like that. I'm not disconnecting the falsetto either. I'm just keeping it all together. Great job. Now I have to be honest, so far that gi, especially on that octave and a half scale, is really, really good at allowing your voice to change from bottom to top. However, it can be really easy sometimes to flip in that one. So like for instance, like a So rather than letting it just keep flipping or disconnecting into falsetto, I wanna give you an exercise that's going to help you actually find a stable place on those voice. So what we're gonna do is we're we're just going to walk up, repeat a top note four times, and come back down. This time we'll actually change that consonant from a G to a B. So it'd be kind of like this. Beep, 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 beep. Guys, go ahead and join me here. Beep, 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 beep. One more. Beep, 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 beep. Ladies, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna start right here on the B4. So it's like a beep, 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 beep. And notice how on each of those, I'm really getting that stable note. It's not beep, 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 beep. Beep, 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 like I'm just saying beep. And that's actually helping my voice connect to those top notes. Now that you've found some more power on those high notes on the BBB exercise, let's actually build a little bit more into them. So we're gonna do that same octave repeat scale. This time we're just gonna do it on a bratty nay. Now, if you've been following my channel for any amount of time, you'll have seen that I love to give out this bratty nay. It's one of the best SLS exercises out there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk up, repeat it, but kind of funny, like nay, 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 nay. Like don't be afraid to make it sound really, really funny like the Wicked Witch. For guys, it's gonna sound like this. Nay, 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 nay. Nay, 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 nay. Keep it funny. Nay, 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 nay. Ladies, you're gonna do the same thing again, starting on this B on top. So nay, 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 nay. Now with any luck, if you did those right, you're gonna feel how you're getting a like a very full sounding mixed voice on that top note. Now, I know it sounds really, really ugly so far. However, if you build more into that and keep doing these warm ups a little bit every day, you can turn that nay into a nay into a all of me. Like you can actually start to turn that into some real singing for you. Now, now that you've got that same feeling on that repeat, Let's do that same thing, but this time we're gonna take it on the octave and a half scale. Now, uh, originally I said that sometimes that octave and a half will make you wanna flip a little bit, and that's totally true. However, in this particular case, since we're doing so well already and we've come so far in your vocal warmups, I wanna just expand that vowel slightly. So rather than a nay, 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 
right. Mm-hmm. Instead, I want to do it on a na na na, like you're saying the word nasty or natural. Now let's take that same thing, guys. We can start down here on the B flat too. So a na 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 Ladies, let's do the same thing starting here on G3. Na 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 One more. Na 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 You feel how strong and powerful those notes are? It really gives you a lot of body up there. And you'll notice that as we go through these vocal warm-ups, it's like things are getting thicker and thicker and thicker and bigger and bigger and bigger and stronger. And that's exactly what we want. Now that we've done some of these exercises on these really kind of funny, like kind of bratty kind of sounds, it's time to see if we can start to normalize that sound a little bit. So rather than going for maybe we can make it into more of a normal sounding kind of like an oval. No, no, no. And this is really, really important in order to get to the next level in your voice. Obviously, I don't want you to sing like super bratty and super ugly when you're on stage. Instead, let's keep it really, really nice and normal. So guys, we're gonna start right here. We're just gonna do that on an octave repeat, no, no, no. Kind of like you're a little bit sad, like no, 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 no. So let's try this, go. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Keep it crying. No, 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 no. Great job. Ladies, let's do the same thing here on the beat. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. And you'll notice that even though that's kind of cry, like, no, no, no. You'll notice that actually it's a little bit more normal sounding than nay, nay, nay. Just this really ugly, no. You can actually turn that into some real singing in a little bit of time. Excellent job, guys. So now that we've started to pivot towards slightly more normal sounds, let's do the same thing. We're gonna go back to our trusty octave and a half scale. And this time we're gonna do it on gug, gug, gug. Like you're saying the word gut but with a G at the end, kind of like this. Guys, join me here, B2. Fantastic. Ladies, let's do the same thing here. Really think like you're saying the word gut. And you've got it. Congratulations, guys. We've made it to the last of the vocal warm up exercises. We have to end on an oldie but a goodie, which is the octave and a half mum, mum, mum. The mum is one of the best exercises in speech level singing. And that's because everything is just saying so nice and open and relaxed and around or no, and having to do any of these weird things, the uh is very relaxed. So we're just gonna do that on an octave and a half. Guys, starting down here like a Ladies, let's do that same thing here. And that'll do it. Guys, congratulations on completing your vocal warm up. This is one that you can come back to every single day and do a little bit in each exercise, but specifically focus on the ones that are a little bit harder for you. What's making them more difficult? Could adding a little bit more bratty, a little bit more cry, focusing on the vowel a little bit more, having more hydration. Could any of these things actually be impacting the way that these vocal warmups are going? And if so, try to start making those changes. And one of the best ways to get started off with that 
is just record yourself practicing along with them. Do they sound the same way that mine sound? Do they sound worse than your normal ones? Do they sound different? And allowing some of those kind of like pieces of feedback that you're getting from yourself to inform how you do them moving forward. Guys, I hope you found this video super, super helpful. Make sure that you click like, comment with the next video that you wanna see me do, subscribe and turn on notifications for this channel. And if you're ready for all these warm ups and a whole lot more, seriously, a whole lot more, check out my complete singing course, Master Your Voice. Links in the description.